guys and welcome to Survival Russia. So is it possible to make a flint and steel fire with stainless steel? Today we are down at the Survival Russia studio here because the weather is a little bit weird. It's a rain and then sun and rain and sun so uh, yeah but we're not here to talk so much about the weather. We're here to talk about is it possible to make fire with stainless steel or make a flint and steel fire with stainless steel because I've seen now and then on the survival scene, even some of the big guns, they have this claim that you cannot use stainless steel to create sparks from a flint and uh, by making sparks, making a fire. So I think that we should put that to the test today. I have a five-year-old daughter sitting up here, so if there's any interference, that'll be her. Well, let's see her. So with me today, I have the Silky Pocket Boy 170. It's uh, stainless steel. It's a high quality Japanese stainless steel. I'm gonna use this as a striker. Then I have some flint I brought with me all the way from Denmark because in this specific area there's not one rock to be found and certainly not any flint. I also have some chaga with me. Chaga is a mushroom that mostly grows on uh, birch trees. I think it's also called true finder. True finder fungus? No, I think it's called true tinder fungus in the English or American. And it makes sense because this is awesome to make fire with. To my knowledge, chaga is the only substance or what you can say found in nature that can uh, take a spark from flint and steel with uh, no processing other than being dried. It doesn't have to be dried over fire. It's actually best if it, has to, if it dries slowly, but it's extremely light. So small pieces will dry pretty fast if carried on the body or between layers of the clothes. I think the reason that many of these big guns are saying that it's not possible to make a flint and steel fire with stainless steel is because it doesn't create that many sparks, but it do create sparks. And uh, I think they haven't tried it with chaga, but let's have a go at it. Flint and chaga, stainless steel. Let's see how this goes. I'll try and scrape it a little bit with a nail here to fluff it up a little bit. I don't know if you can see the sparks, they're not, they're not a lot of, there's not a lot of them, but they're there. It certainly is harder with uh, stainless steel than with, uh, with a file, for example. I need a very sharp edge on the, on the flint compared to with uh, a normal striker. We got it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's certainly a lot harder, but doable. Me and my daughter, we actually collected some grass in case that I should be successful. I know when my old viewers and subscribers are sitting, oh, Lars and Chaga, but there's some new guys, maybe they don't know Chaga. The reason why this is much, much better than uh, charcoal or charcloth <laughs> is that uh, it burns much hotter, it's a solid ember and it's easy to transfer from one piece to another. Here's a sit my daughter is here because I'm alone with her, as some of you might know, so it's homestead videos for another 10 days or so. But we have grass, where the hill is my chaga, it's fallen down here. Have a nice big piece here. Chaga, dump it in here. In situations where I use chaga for fire making, it is normally just raw spruce branches or, or pine or something like that. So for me, it feels actually a little bit like cheating using dry grass. Also waving it is a really good method of uh, getting it going instead of uh, using a uh, humid breath. It's also a little bonus info. And me and my daughter, we have an awesome video coming up one of the days. That's gonna be really fun. Yeah. No, <laughs> She's asking me when does the fire come. Come on over. Coming now. Mm -hmm. 
So, we have the fire with the stainless steel and the flint and the charger. According to quite a few big guns out there, this should not be possible. So, uh, always do your own research and get out and train. That's what it's all about. It's not what it's all about, but uh, it's important. <laughs> I see we have a little troll there behind me. Yeah. So on this note, I'll just say thank you for your time and uh, sub share, subscribe, like, and all this stuff, and uh, check the links in the description. Of course, there might be something useful for you. Thank you to all the donators uh, from Patreon and PayPal. So get out and train and get it done. And see you next time here in Russia.